Welcome back to our analysis of Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. We pick up where we left off and head towards our next garrison. New objective received. Displaying. Leave no enemies functioning. On. As we reach our next garrison, the shield generator is located conveniently to our right, making this the easiest garrison to liberate in the game. As usual, a dragon shows up and proceeds to tear the base apart. After the dragon destroys most of the enemies, it goes back to a calm state, since the remaining enemy is located at the far side of the base. I throw out a cyber heart to keep the dragon from walking out of the base. Liberating certain garrisons leads to the unlocking of map scans for the four different quadrants of the island. In this case, the northeast map scan becomes available, which will make acquiring collectibles very convenient later on in the game. This next Predator's Path mission is the most challenging one. It requires you to hunt one of the harder to kill enemies, the Tiger. These cats move quickly, are very well camouflaged, and can result in an instant kill if you fail the Quick Time event, or QTE, when they grab you. On average, the Tiger takes two arrows to kill, and the rare version takes three well-placed shots. Thank <laughs> you. 
Roger. Another random encounter with the enemy, with a very well-timed but unintentional distraction by the local dragon. The dragons have a tendency to eat the soldiers they kill, so looting these bodies must be done quickly before the dragon arrives and spots me. Displaying new objective. Eliminate all enemies before proceeding. This next garrison is conveniently located across from a sniping point. At this distance, I can safely eliminate the helicopter pilots before going into the base to kill the rest of the soldiers. The zip line that is close to the sniper spot acts as a good way of entering the base, immediately giving me the high ground. It is also conveniently located next to the mega shield deactivation switch, which allows me to use a dragon to my advantage.
At this point, you'll notice that these side activities are beginning to provide some very useful upgrades for my weapons, especially with the explosive rounds for the sniper rifle. On to our next Predator's Path mission. This mission has a very interesting structure to it. You'll notice that our target is very well concealed behind cover. He's also surrounded by many soldiers and vehicles. If I went ahead and tried to blow up the vehicles, the target would be killed with the wrong weapon, and I would fail the mission. After stealth killing the sniper that approaches my location, I decide to lure out the target with a well-placed D20. Once he has exposed himself, I attempt to kill him first as quickly as possible. After killing him, I deal with the rest by using the weapon of choice, grenades. Nine point five. Heartbroken.
New objective received. Displaying. Eliminate all enemies before proceeding. Consider it done. We arrive at our next garrison, and after a bit of consideration, I decide to take the stairs and gain access to higher ground in order to deal with the sniper. After killing the sniper, there are several options at my disposal. This garrison presents a new challenge in the form of a soldier manning the gun turret nearby. If I wanted to choose the stealth route, I could use the conveniently placed zip lines to flank the soldier and kill him quietly. However, thanks to acquiring the explosive sniper rounds, I take a more aggressive route. You'll also notice that I have gained enough cyber points to gain some new useful abilities that allow me to loot enemies during knife kills and to move much faster while crouched. Doing these side activities are very satisfying and rewarding, which is the best way to structure your game. Excuse me while I rip this out. This takes me back. Another broken heart.
blah, blah, kill, blah, blah, blah. I don't have any healing items at this point, but the game allows you to heal yourself to a certain degree, as many times as you like. This is quite convenient, but it also leaves you very vulnerable in the middle of a firefight, since you can't cancel this animation. A nice balance of risk and reward. The next side mission presents a new challenge in the form of a soldier being uncomfortably close to the hostage. If I'm to be successful in rescuing the hostage, at the very least, I need to kill the nearby guard and the one walking close by. When the heavy soldier is the only one left, I use my pistol fire to put him into a stun animation, which gives me time to throw out a grenade and kill him. That's the end of this part, stay tuned for the next part as we continue with more side activities.